Hey everyone, this is TK and I'm back yet again with my trusty kitchen knife for another unboxing video. So I've got two items here to unbox. One is the Western Digital Blue SN550 NVMe SSD drive, which can supposedly support 2,400 megabytes per second read, and I believe it's 750 megabytes per second write. And I'm gonna be putting this into my NVMe enclosure, which is made by Orico. I chose the blue color and I actually bought this a long time ago but I never tested it and it just so happens that I bought a blue drive so they go nice together. Not that you'd ever see the drive once it's in. So let's start with the SSD. Let's put this to the side and let's see what's on the back. Anything interesting? Nothing really. Nothing much exciting around the packaging. So let's get our trusty knife and open the packaging. There we go. Nothing really too exciting about unboxing an SSD and that's why I'm gonna be putting it into the caddy at the same time. So let's put that down there. Got some paperwork, which we'll inevitably read at bedtime to help us get to sleep. So here's a drive in lots of plastic. No idea why they make the packaging this big, but there it is. And uh, let's take out the drive. And it really is very small, isn't it? very small drive. So let's put that to the side for a second. And let's get our NVMe enclosure. Let's take all this stuff out of the way. So this doesn't appear to have any towel, it just slides out. So let's slide that out. And inside we have a nice blue aluminium cover. So let's just take this out for a second, see what else is inside the box. So we have a USB-C to C cable. So this enclosure should support 10 gigabits, as it says on the box here. Forgot to go around the box, but anyway, it's 10 gigabits. Anything exciting on the back? Let's have a quick look. We've got two terabytes maximum, USB-C, sorry, USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabits. And that's essentially what you need to obtain 10 gigabits, USB 3.1 Gen 2 and then you need a USB Type-C connector because it's a USB-C enclosure. However, you can get USB-A 10 gigabit ports as well. We have a screwdriver to help us put the drive in. We have a thermal pad, which we can use, and I'm not gonna bother with that right now. And then we have some paperwork. So let's get rid of that. Oh, we'll keep the screwdriver actually, we'll need that. So let's take the enclosure out of the packaging, have a quick look at it. Yeah, it looks nice. So this just slides off, I believe, is it this way? There we go. And the drive fits inside here. So let's take this out so that we can put the drive in. So what we need to do, there's actually a metal holder here with a screw on it. So let's take this provided screwdriver and unscrew that. And what we need to do is position our SSD inside and then screw this back in. So let's get our SSD back out. So we're just gonna put it inside like this. And then we position the metal end here. So that just goes into the gap there, goes down onto the tray, and then we just put the screw it's a little bit fiddly. I would highly recommend getting something which doesn't have any screws. And there is one by a company called Unitech, which I would highly recommend. I think it's about 35 pounds in the UK and about 130 dirhams in the UAE. They did have a Black Friday offer for 105 dirhams. But since I already had one lying around, I saw no need to buy another one. So anyway, let's carry on. So we just fit the drive back in like this. And I believe that's in. Is it in? Oh no, one second. It's not in correctly yet. There we go. Just need to make sure that everything is positioned right. And we're in. Once we've done that, put our cover, oh, let me botch that one up, back on like this. So you just put it towards the end and then slide and we're done. The drive is in. So let me pause the video here. I'll grab my laptop quickly and let's do a quick format and speed test. Back in a moment. Okay, so I've plugged my 
USB-C enclosure with my SL550 1TB drive into my laptop. And what I've done is I've actually connected my Dell Precision 5540, which is a laptop I'm using, to my Dell TB16 Thunderbolt dock. And I've connected a 10 gigabits USB-C cable to my Thunderbolt port on the TB16. So theoretically, I should easily be able to attain that 10 gigabits or one gigabyte per second speed for my enclosure. So I have a test file here and I have a benchmark tool called, which is by ATTO. So the test file is 25.2 gigabytes. You can see here, or it says 26,000 kilobytes. So what we first we need to do, you can see here, I've got two drives, C drive and D drive. This is my primary OS drive. This is my secondary SSD, SATA SSD at five, which is 500 megabytes per second. And before I initialize the external drive, let's open the benchmark tool and just test my C drive to make sure that it is fast enough to test for the external enclosure for transfer. So let's do a quick speed test. So I've set, it here, set here the biggest length and transfer size, so we just get one reading and we just assume that that's the maximum speed that we can get from this drive. So we have a read of about three gigabytes per second and a write of about 1.7 gigabytes per second. Now obviously we won't be able to see these sort of speeds from the enclosure because we're limited to 10 gigabits, which is one gigabyte. So the first thing we need to do when we connect this new architecture, when we connect the new drive, is right click on the start menu and click this menu, at least if you're on a Windows PC. As soon as you open it, it will set the drive and you will see that it needs to have a partition style. So we're just going to leave it as GPT and say disk 2, click OK. If I maximize this window, I should be able to see disk 2, 931 gigabytes. If you want to know why this is less than 1000 gigabytes, please watch my other video about how sizes vary based on manufacturer, uh, the, way, the way the manufacturer makes disks and the way the Windows reads disks. It's different in Linux, at least for Windows, you can watch that video to get more information about why it's 931 gigabytes and not 1000 gigabytes. So the first thing we need to do, we're not going to see the drives. So if I drop into my second window, I still only see two drives. So right click, use the volume, next, next, I'm just going to accept all the ports. I don't like naming my drives, I'll leave it until this for now. That's fine. Click finish. And we're done. So we now have our E drive, which we should be able to also see here. Okay, so let's go back to our benchmark tool. And let's show it, or we have to close it and reopen it because it doesn't know about this. Let's go back to our benchmark tool. And select the E drive. Again, I'm going to select 8 kilobytes for transfer size two gigabytes of total length and start. So this will give me an indication of what is the maximum possible for my enclosure for read and write. So I'm hoping for 1000 meg, may not happen, but okay, so again, 837 write, which is probably more realistic, and a read speed of 950 megabytes. Now that's quite good for an enclosure. And I did do a test with the USB cable with another drive before I was able to attain the maximum uh, 1000 megabytes. But for now, this is fine. Uh, we're going to now see if we can actually write and read at this speed when we're transferring files from my internal TCI SSD, which is my C drive. So this is my C drive here, and I'm going to open the E drive, which is our new drive, and I've got my test file of 25 gig, and I'm going to drag and drop. And you can see it's copying at 500 megabytes per second. And that's considerably slower than the benchmark of 800 megabytes per second, or 800,000. 800, uh, bytes per second. So that's not good, but it's more than sufficient to say, you know, 526 meg is enough. Uh, I'm actually going to let the file complete copying. So that would take about another 25 seconds. So let me just pause the video for a moment. Okay, so the file has finished transferring, and the reason why I've copied this file is because I'm going to rename this one, and we're going to do another test after I perform some changes to my drive settings. So if I go back to my local disks, go to this PC, right-click on my drive, and click Properties, and this is how you can speed up your drive. Now, there are some drawbacks to this, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. So we've got hardware. This is my external enclosure, J Micron generic Sky device. I click properties, click change settings, go over to policies, 
And you see here, you have quick removal and better performance. So what we need to do now is, we're going to select better performance and enable write caching. So what this will do, is they will improve system performance by enabling write caching on the device. So this will effectively, as far as I know, use RAM to increase the speed of our transfer. So let's see how that works. So I think, okay. And that's now done. So, let's try the same file transfer again. First, let's copy this file back to see how fast it reads. And we're getting 700 megabytes per second, which is definitely a very good transfer rate. And although we saw in benchmark over 900 meg, but 700 is more than sufficient for our external drive. So now let's try and copy the file back to the FSD and let's see how it improves. Look at that transfer speed. So now because it's using caching, it's able to get 2 gigabytes per second. And even the write speed has increased. We now have 680 megabytes per second, or in excess of that. So the drive is functioning very well. And it's definitely very fast. It's uh, definitely faster than its conventional SATA external SSD. I'm not sure if there's any ways to increase the performance above this, and I'm sure it will perform much better inside the laptop. So again, just to, just to confirm one more time, it's 2,400 megabytes read and 1,750 megabytes write. I think I made a mistake at the beginning of the video. I said 750 megabytes. I was supposed to say 1,750 megabytes per second. So one more thing about the Western Digital Drive is that it's actually a DRAM list drive. <clears throat> so what that means is it will use your system memory to do the caching and things like that rather than using the RAM on the hard drive. So because it's a DRAM list drive, you know, there are some drawbacks. It may not work on some systems, but most new systems should handle that absolutely fine. So that's it for this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and ask any questions if you're thinking about buying a drive like this or an external enclosure. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.